welcome back to this next video and uh, in this video we are going to talk about the uh, peptide vaccines in the last video we talked about the subunit vaccines and in the subunit vaccine whole of the organism is not utilized as a vaccine but the surface protein of those particular pathogenic organism they are utilized as a vaccine now the question is does a small peptide fragment of a protein it can act as an effective subunit vaccine and induce the production of the neutralizing antibodies now this is a good question because if you uh, think only those peptides for protein that are accessible to the antibody binding that means those peptides which are present on the exterior surface of the virus or the exterior surface of those particular proteins which are immunologically recognized by the antibody and those particular peptide which are inaccessible and they are present inside the virus particle or they are present in the interior of the protein they will be ignored if they do not contribute to the conformation of the immunogenic peptide if this is a protein for example and if you talk about the uh, surface peptides the antibodies are only going to interact with these surface peptides this mean immunologically only these surface peptides they are important and the peptide that are present in the interior of the proteins or in the interior of the organism they are not immunologically important so the basis of the peptide vaccine is that is the antibodies they are responsible for immunity against a particular pathogen so only those particular peptides of the protein that are immunologically active they can be utilized as a vaccine uh, and they can be uh, because they are immunogenic in nature and the peptide which are present in the interior of the protein or the uh, which are present in the interior of this those particular pathogenic organism they are not immunologically important but the important thing to keep in mind about the peptide vaccine is that if you are choosing a surface uh, peptide that particular surface peptide should be in a conformation to which the antibody they can interact uh, you should and uh, you need to understand two terms uh, one is the epitope and the other one that is the paratope if this is the whole protein uh, present on the uh, surface of a particular or pathogenic organism or if it is a pure protein so if you can see only this blue portion only a small portion of this particular protein that is interacting with the antibodies and the rest of the protein that is not responsible for binding to the uh, antibody that means that immunologically only this particular portion only this blue portion out of this total protein that is important to generate the immunity and thereby act as a vaccine now paratope is actually the uh, part of the antibody which interact with the uh, epitope of a particular pathogenic organism to uh, uh, discuss the uh, peptide vaccine we will be using a uh, malarial uh, vaccine as an example the reason is that malaria uh, is a very important disease and malaria is a parasitic disease that is transmitted to humans and other vertebrates by the genus plasmodium and is potentially fatal historically the malarial parasite is thought to have killed more humans than any other single cause and uh, if you look at today's scenario the uh, malaria is still in the big three infectious diseases along with uh, hiv and tuberculosis especially in parts of the central and south america asia and sub-saharan africa where up to 90 percent of malarial deaths occur now the malarial parasites they are bigger and more complicated than the viruses and the bacteria that have been con that have been controlled by the vaccines thereby the need for a malarial vaccines they need uh, more uh, they need more efforts uh, to be to have an effective malarial vaccine now, if you talk about the genus plasmodium it contains approximately 125 known species of parasitic protozoa uh, out of which only five are can infect the humans and the uh, they can cause malaria in the human beings and out of these five which the name of which i have mentioned 
the Plasmodium falciferum that elicit the most severe malarial disease and deaths and therefore it is the target of most vaccine development efforts. If you stain a malarial parasite and if you look that under a microscope you can actually see a shape like this for the uh, malarial parasite. If you talk about the uh, life cycle of the malarial parasite is uh, when a female Anopheles mosquito it bites a person, the mosquito introduces the sporozoites in the body. These sporozoites they move into the liver cells, and in the liver cell they are converted into the merozoites. These merozoites they are going to attack the red blood cell, bursting them and uh, infecting other red blood cell, thereby uh, decreasing the uh, hemoglobin level or the red blood cell number in that particular individual. When these merozoites uh, inside the red blood cell they are converted into the uh, gametocytes and these gametocytes are again taken up by the uh, malarial uh, by the anopheles mosquito to begin its cycle again. Now most of the uh, severe symptoms of uh, uh, malarial parasite they are because of the uh, uh, bursting of the uh, red blood cell. This means that uh, for a vaccine these uh, merozoites they are the best targets because they are causing the uh, severe uh, symptoms of the malarial disease. Now some individuals uh, who are infected with malarial parasite they made antibodies against a particular surface protein of the merozoite and that particular protein is known as the merozoite surface protein 3 and those individuals who made the antibodies against this particular protein they prevent the parasite growth and they were resistant to the malarial infection. Now when this merozoite surface protein it was studied in detail uh, it came to known that the N-terminal part of this protein that varies considerably among different plasmodium strains while the C-terminal of this particular protein that is highly conserved in these various strains. Keeping in view this particular information, the C-terminal uh, that was selected to be uh, used as a vaccine. The reason is that if the N-terminal, if that is varying among different strains of the plasmodium, you can utilize the N-terminal vaccine against specific strains. But if you are using the C-terminal, it is highly conserved among various strains. So this uh, one vaccine made from the C-terminal, it can be utilized as a vaccine against uh, multiple strains of the uh, plasmodium. Now the uh, peptide that corresponds to the uh, region, uh, the uh, region of the C-terminus of the merozoid surface protein 3, they were synthesized and the human serum antibodies from individuals who were resistant to the parasite were affinity purified based upon their interaction with one or more of these peptides and were then tested in an antibody dependent cellular toxicity assay. What I mean by this is that they took the antibodies from the individual who were resistant to the malaria and they uh, checked the interaction of these antibodies with the peptides that were taken from the C terminal of the merozoid surface protein 3. Now if these peptides which are from the merozoid surface protein 3 if they have the ability to interact with these antibody that means that these C terminal can uh, you can say uh, can make immunity against the uh, malarial parasite and it was actually checked by an antibody dependent cellular toxicity assay. This is the uh, whole protein of the merozoid surface protein 3. This is the N-terminal and this is the C-terminal. They tested uh, various fragments as indicated by A, B, C, D, E and F. They checked uh, various peptides for their, uh, uh, for their immunogenicity uh, and upon analyzing uh, what they came to know is that the uh, peptides from, uh, from 187 to 276 actually made from the uh, B, C and D peptides uh, this uh, this peptide this bigger peptide from 181 from amino acid number 181 to amino acid number 276 that was synthesized and this is currently being tested in clinical trials as normal 
as a novel malarial vaccines because these peptides when they were tested uh, they were actually uh, generating uh, immunity against the malarial parasite while more research need to be done uh, current evidence suggests that synthetic peptide vaccines may become highly specific they are relatively inexpensive they are safe and the effective alternatives to traditional vaccines the most important thing about the vaccine is uh, its inexpensive nature and its safe nature and we discussed many problems in the live attenuated and the uh, killed vaccines and uh, they were very expensive as well so these peptide vaccines they can be highly inexpensive relatively inexpensive and they are very safe and highly specific in nature thereby making them good candidates for the uh, malarial vaccines if you talk about the limitation of the peptide vaccines uh, one of the uh, important limitation is that an epitope must consist of a short stretch of contiguous amino acid which does not always occur naturally so if you talk about the protein the epitopes which are made they are actually not made from a contiguous amino acid and if you do not have a short stretch of the contiguous amino acid you cannot make an epitope which which have the ability to interact with the antibodies now the peptide must be able to assume the same conformation as the epitope in the intact viral particle if you talk about whole of the protein if you talk about a total protein different peptides they are there and all of them they are responsible for making the uh, peptide of the surface uh, interacting with the antibodies but if you are removing those particular peptides and then the surface peptide do not have that same conformation of the epitope that mean that the antibody will not interact with them therefore they will not be able to generate immunity and uh, another problem is that most of the time a single epitope they may not be sufficiently immunogenic so you have to make uh, multiple epitopes to make them uh, sufficiently immunogenic another important type of the vaccine that is known is the uh, toxoid vaccines now a toxoid is an inactivated toxin uh, usually an exotoxin uh, exotoxin are usually those toxins which are secreted by the pathogenic organisms so a toxoid they are inactivated toxins whose toxicity has been suppressed either by chemical uh, usually the formalin or the heat treatment so you have uh, suppressed the toxicity but at the same time these treatments they are not affecting the immunogenicity of this particular toxide now the toxins they are secreted by the bacteria whereas the toxoids are the altered form of the toxins so you should uh, differentiate between the term uh, toxins and the toxides so the tox the toxins they are secreted by the bacteria so they are natural in nature whereas these toxides you have uh, changed them either by chemical treatment or by heat treatment therefore we call them is the uh, toxides and these toxides they are not secreted by the bacteria now during the vaccination an immune response is mounted against these uh, toxin because as i've told you that uh, when you suppress their toxicity their immunogenicity is still intact so when you introduce them during the vaccination an immune response is mounted and immunological memory is formed against the uh, molecular marker of the toxin and the important thing is that when you introduce these toxin they are not resulting in toxin induced illness because you have uh, suppressed the toxicity of the toxins now such preparation they are also known as the anatoxins and that these toxins you can also call them is the uh, anatoxins and the uh, toxin vaccines they are uh, available for the uh, diphtheria for the tetanus and the uh, botulism i'll specifically talk about the uh, botulinum toxin the botulinum toxin which is produced by the uh, clostridium botulinum it is a neurotoxic protein and it is responsible for the uh, flaccid paralysis it is going to uh, uh, paralyze the paralyze your muscles now how it is going to paralyze the uh, muscles in an individual who ingest these toxins now in normal condition the uh, these yellow balls and the are uh, these are the uh, acetylcholine neurotransmitters these acetylcholine neurotransmitters they are uh, released from the presynaptic neuron 
this uh, big blue ball is a presynaptic neuron these acetylcholine they are released and they are going to bind to the receptors which are present on the uh, post synaptic neuron and the when the acetylcholine they bind to the receptor of the post synaptic neuron there is a contraction or a relaxation of the muscles when you talk about the botulism the when the botulinum toxin it uh, enters into the body it is going to stop the release of the uh, acetylcholine and when the acetylcholine that is not released that means it is not going to bind with the uh, receptors of the postsynaptic neuron thereby causing the uh, uh, flaccid paralysis so these uh, toxide vaccines they are actually uh, the uh, modified toxins which are uh, used to uh, generate immunity against these particular toxins if in the future uh, you ingest them